I started to call myself a Buddhist and I considered myself a, a Buddhist and I tried to read everything I could on the subject. So I remember going to a shop once and they had the collected works of Dr. D.T. Suzuki, a famous Japanese uh, Zen teacher who was very popular in the West in the 1930s, 40s and 50s. And I thought, oh, really, this sounds really great. And I'll have to confess, I read this book three times. I couldn't make any sense out of it. It didn't inspire me at all. <laughs> and many years later, I, I read a book by another person who was very critical of Zen Buddhism. And he said, um, I really admire Dr. Suzuki. He, read, he wrote a million words of nothing. And that was pretty much my experience <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I read other things, but it became confusing when I came to Mahayana Buddhism because it seemed to be so different. So I think I had a problem that a lot of people had in those times, and even today. It's a bit of a muddle as to which type of Buddhism, or and some of them seem to be quite different. So I, I sort of struggled with this, but I didn't give up. Another problem was that I wasn't, by that time I wasn't necessarily a particularly happy child. I had, uh, you know, the problems of puberty which all children have. Uh, I wasn't particularly good at school. I, there were problems in home life too. My parents' marriage wasn't a particularly uh, happy one. And I started to become somewhat of a lonely kid. And. Um, uh, what else? I think I was, maybe because I was um, lo a little bit lonely, I sort of tended to fantasize a lot. And then I sort of went back to seven years in Tibet. And I thought, isn't that amazing? Uh, this, this child of 16 or 17, and he's a god king. He's about the same age as I am. Wow, isn't that fantastic? And I really sort of developed... A, a tendency of sort of fantasizing or trying to imagine what that would be like. So I started to, and this didn't really help my schoolwork because schoolwork demands, you know, um, sticking to the subject. I became a bit of a dreamer. Um, anyway, um, that changed after I started learning Buddhism well and taking very seriously the idea of meditation. Now, I certainly didn't meditate because there was nobody to teach me. But I did start looking at my mind and, and seeing that some of my thought patterns weren't really helping me get through life and be, uh, be a happy and sort of well-balanced child. So um, that was it. And other things is um, I had then, as I have now, a great interest in history. Nowadays my uh, interest in history has shifted very much to ancient Indian history and Buddhist history, but in those times it was fairly general. I had an interest in religion, although I mainly focused on Buddhism, I read about other religions too. Um, I had like kids of my generation, when I was 17 or 18, I was interested in the, the Beatles and all that sort of thing. And so that's pretty much my life before I became a monk. <laughs>